Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video we're going to study simplifying and how to use factoring when simplifying fractions. Now, if you are a follower of my curriculum, Math Mammoth, you might be used to this kind of notation for simplifying fractions. I have used the arrow notation. Well, we have 18 over 24 and both of these numbers are divisible by 6. So then we simplify and we get 3 fourths. Now we're going to use a new type of notation commonly used in algebra and onwards. And that is that when we're simplifying, we cross out the number here, 18 and 24. We cross them out because we're going to divide them both by 6. We're not going to show the 6 here anywhere, but we divide 18 by 6 and get 3 and replace the 18 by 3. And then 24 gets replaced by 4. The number 6 is not shown anywhere. It is just in your mind that you divided both of them by 6. And then you're just left with 3 over 4, so you can write it here too. Let's see how this comes about. If I'm simplifying this fraction, I notice both of these are divisible by 3. So I divide by 3 in my mind, right? 15 divided by 3 equals 5, so this gets replaced by 5. This divided by 3 is 13, so I get 5 over 13. Another example, both of these are divisible by 4, so I divide by 4, I get 7. I divide by 4, I get 10. So this is equal to 7 tenths. Now, you might not see any benefit yet with this new notation, but as things get more complex, you will see it, okay? Let's look at this one. We want to simplify this fraction. And now I'm going to use factoring. I'm going to, at first, write 64 as 8 times 8, right? And I'm going to write 96 as something times something too. You can choose many different ways, but I'm going to write it as 8 times 12. Okay, and now you see 8 divided by 8. Those 8s will cancel out. Or you could think of it this way. I'm going to divide both of them by 8. And so that just leaves 8 divided by 8. It leaves 1. Basically, they cancel out. They leave 1 and 1. Now here, 8 and 12, it is the fraction 8 twelfths. I can simplify there too, because those are divisible by 4. So I will leave here, 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. And now, remember these are replacements for the numbers that are crossed out. So over here I actually have 1 times 2, and down here I have 1 times 3. So 1 times 2 is 2, and then 1 times 3 is 3. All done. 96 over 120. If I'm using factoring, I will first write both of these numbers as something times something. 120 would be 12 times 10, maybe. And uh, 96 is 12 times something too, isn't it? It's 12 times 8. So that makes it handy. I can just cross out my 12s, leaving 1 and 1. And then 8 tenths is left. And those, both of those are divisible by 2. So I go 8 divided by 2 leaves 4. And here, 5. You just have to be careful of not writing 2 here. You divide by 2, but you're not showing the 2 anywhere. Don't write 2 anywhere. Write what you get from the division, 5. So now 1 times 4, that's 4, and over here 1 times 5 is 5. 76 over 104. Now, like I said, again, I want to write both of those numbers as something times something. I need to factor them. So what is 76 divisible by? I mean, it's an even number, yeah. It's 2 times 38. So I guess we can try that, see what happens. It's also divisible by 4. Now this one is divisible by 4 and 2, so, but since we had 2 there, let's try that one here too. 2 times 52. Now my 2s cancel, but I still can simplify because 38 and 52 are still even numbers. So I divide by 2 and get 19, divide by 2 and get 26. Now I cannot simplify anymore because 19 is a prime. So there's 19 here and 26. 